Hi everyone, it's Eleanor back from the field station. I'm out here on Saturday afternoon on the Springhouse Trail. If you saw my last video, you'll know that I found a bunch of Jack in the Pulpit flowering out here and they were just so cool that I couldn't risk, resist coming back out here this afternoon and drawing and writing about them in my nature journal. So I'm going to spend the next little while um, in my nature journal and I wanted to bring you along. If you haven't heard of that term before or aren't familiar with the idea of nature journaling, um, it's basically writing or drawing about natural objects that can be plants or animals or rocks or weather or really anything that you might find outside. Um, and not really focusing on creating beautiful art or writing the most eloquent prose that you could. It's really about um, mindfully engaging with what we find outside, developing a personal relationship with nature, um, practicing curiosity, really focusing on coming up with questions, uh, making close observations, writing good notes, um, maybe collecting some data that would be useful to science later on, um, and hopefully making a record of a really wonderful afternoon, morning, whenever spent outside. Um, so those are the three main reasons I do it. It's to develop my personal relationship with nature, it's to learn more about nature, and it's just to solidify my memories of the time that I'm out here. Um, if you want more information about it, I would recommend, this is really for me the go-to reference. It's um, John Muir Laws's Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling. To me, John Muir Laws is really the godfather of nature journaling. This is a wonderful reference. Um, there's also a Facebook a group called the Nature Journal Club where people post um, pages from their nature journal, references, uh, resources, tools, really an amazing um, place to go check out if you want more information, um, as well as his website. There's just a ton of stuff on there. So I would recommend any of the, those resources. Um, and in terms of what I have out here with me this afternoon, um, I have a my nature journal. I like this big format. It's an eight and a half by 11 journal, so like a regular size piece of paper. Um, and that means I have lots and lots of room to make as many notes as pictures as I'd like to. Um, I also have what's called a non-photo blue pencil. So this is a light blue pencil um, that I can kind of light, make light sketches with and not really commit to and it won't show up really at the end of the sketch. Um, I have a black pen. I have a measuring tape in case I want to measure anything. Um, I have a couple handy dandy tools called, um, they're water brushes, they're paint brushes, but they have water in the handle of the brush so that I don't have to bring a cup of water to use paint. Um, so I also have, for those paint brushes, I have a little um, travel palette. I'm not sure I'll use this, but it's nice to have um, with me. And just a rag to wa wipe off. Um, those paint brushes. So that's not a lot of material. You don't need paint necessarily. I'm not sure I'll even use it today, um, but I have it just in case. And I'm going to change my shot here and get to it. Okay, so I've made a start on my page. Um, I think it can be often kind of hard to know where even to start. There's so much that you can do in a nature journal. Um, but to start, I usually like just kind of a roughly um, life-size picture of whatever plant or animal I am drawing that day. So that's what I've done here. Um, it is, I think it's pretty much life-size, a sketch of a single um, plant in this little cluster of Jack in the Pulpit. I started with a light sketch in that non-photo blue pencil. I'm not sure you'll even be able to see that um, through the video. And then I've gone over it with this black pen. Um, and really, I could stop there. I'm pretty happy with that picture as is. I could move on to um, kind of more zoomed in things or making closer observations or writing some notes. Um, but I do think I'm going to add um, some color today just because I love the contrast between the dark maroon insides of this structure with the bright green. So I'm going to add some color and be back in a second. So I've been out here I think about an hour now. 
First, I just have to say, I really can't imagine a better way to spend a beautiful spring afternoon. It is so much fun to be out here drawing and writing and making art, just listening to the birds. I love it. It's great. I would highly recommend spending an afternoon this way. Um, so I finished the painting and now I've been just making some notes, some measurements, um, some observations about the cluster that I'm sitting right next to. So I've counted the number of stalks in the cluster, made some notes about um, how big it is, the, the distribution of male and female flowers, um, and then I've started to kind of compare um, different uh, little flowers within the cluster. So I've noticed that there's kind of a gradient of barely opened flowers like this one here to a fully flopped over, fully formed pulpit like the one that I made um, the big painting of. So that's a nice thing to do. Um, it's a good strategy for making observations is to pick different uh, members of the same species and compare and contrast and see what you can learn about the species that way. Maybe how it grows, um, how constant it is from individual to individual, how much variation there is. That's interesting. Um, and I'm going to make a few more observations and I think call it a day. So a great way to get a little bit closer to whatever you're looking at is to have a hand lens on you. So that's the last thing that I did today. Um, this is a great um, cheap little hand lens you can get on Amazon, lots of places online um, from Entech. Um, and so I actually took off with a knife um, that space, that flower that I was looking at and I peeled off the outside leaf so that I could look up close at what's actually going on inside. It's an amazing structure and that's one thing I wanna look up when I get back inside is what is the point of this cylinder? I'm not really sure why it's even there because the actual flower, let's see if you can see, is these little green bits down here. So this is a female flower um, that you can, you can tell because it has these green kind of bulbous structures down here with little white bits on the end. So this is the female flower and now that I've kind of dissected it and gotten on my hand lens, I'm able to make really up close um, observations for my nature journal. Well, my phone died while I was out there, but I just wanted to show you kind of the finished spread from the afternoon and talk through a couple of the different components. Um, I often like to put a title and that kind of pulls the, the spread together, gives an idea of what I was focusing on today. I also like to put um, some information about when I was out there, maybe some information about the weather, where I was, um, and that's valuable information. If this is ever gonna be useful to me or any other scientist, it's, that's really valuable, um, called metadata. So maybe I'll come back next year and draw a Jack in the Pulpit again, and it's gonna be interesting to know that I was out here on April 18th and see how that compares to next year. Um, so I have my full size painting of a Jack in the Pulpit. Um, my sketches of the kind of stages of flowering. Um, and then I did some kind of cross sections. I thought the, the structure was quite round, but when I looked closely, I noticed that it was actually pretty oblong. And this is at different heights on that flower structure. Um, and so that was interesting. I had never noticed that before. Um, and I was reading in the laws guide that I showed earlier yesterday, and I've read it, I don't know how many times, but I read something that really struck me, which is, he says, if you notice something or see something that you've never seen before, then you are nature journaling right. It doesn't matter if, you know, if I make any bloopers in my journal like I did right here, I saw something um, that I hadn't seen before today. So I feel good about that. Um, and I also made a little drawing of the inside of the flower structure. And then I got my hand lens out and I could see really up close the teeny tiny structures in that flower down there and how they're packed in. Um, Another rule of thumb that John Muir Laws gives is that it's nice to have a mix, mixture of, um, of drawings, of, of words, of numbers. Um, so you're kind of trying all the different modes of looking at nature. So as you can probably tell, I've really been enjoying nature journaling. I think you might too. If you already are nature journaling or if you give it a try for the first time, I would love to know. Please send us pictures, videos, let us know in the comments. We would love to see what you're working on. And until next time, take care. Bye.